So today we're gonna to look at all of the costs of buying a property that you need to be aware of and that you need to be budgeting and saving towards. A lot of people assume that buying a property is just about the deposit, but there's almost always going to be extra thousands of pounds worth of additional costs and fees on top of that. So I'm gonna give you a breakdown of all of these so that you're budgeting accurately. The first cost of buying a property, and nine times out of 10 is gonna be the biggest one, is the deposit as we talked about at the beginning of this video. Now, the typical deposit required for a buy-to-let investment property is 25%. And for a residential property in which you're gonna live in is 10 to 15%. Now, you do have the recently introduced 95% government mortgage guarantee scheme, where you as a buyer are required to put down 5% and the government guarantees the rest that you can get via a mortgage. Now, I did a whole other video on that about how it works and what the criteria are for being accepted for one hour check that video out all of the detail is in there so to give you an example if you were going to buy say a 100,000 pound property as a buy to let you're going to need to contribute 25,000 pounds i.e 25 percent as a deposit and you're going to borrow the rest from a mortgage lender and it's usually common for you to repay that amount over the course of 25 years if it's a capital repayment mortgage interestingly guys there was a time when you could get 100 percent mortgages i.e no deposit to pay what? a lot of you under 30 you're probably smashing your laptop screens right now can you imagine buying a house and not needing a deposit guys that was real life prior to 2008 and it was also the reason why we had an economic crash or one of the primary reasons why kid you not guys banks are effectively giving away mortgages like oprah gives away books and cars now i would say that those days are long gone and will never come back but these things tend to go in cycles and history tends to repeat itself we're already seeing relaxation of mortgage products gradually over the years, over the decades. I wouldn't be surprised if they were to come in at some point in the future again, especially during an economic boom scenario. Now, my top tip for you when it comes to mortgage loans, guys, is to use a broker. You're gonna want the best interest rate possible. Why, let me give you an example. Because when we're talking about compounding interest over the term of 25 years, or long term, the savings that you can make by getting a lower rate are huge. So for example, a 500,000 pound mortgage at 2%, that would be nice, will have you repaying 636,000 pounds over the 25 year term. Now that same mortgage at just 1% more, i.e. 3%, is gonna have you repaying 711,000 pounds. Just 1% more is gonna cost you an extra 75 grand over the same course of that mortgage term, guys. It's no joke. So use a broker to get the best rates possible. Now, the second largest cost of buying a house is the stamp duty, usually. Stamp duty is a tax that you pay on property purchases in the UK. It's inescapable unless the property is a commercial property or below a certain price. Now, your stamp duty tax bill is gonna depend on how much you pay for the property and whether you're going to actually live in it, are you dwelling property or not? So right now in the UK, if you're buying your first property, there's zero stamp duty tax to pay on your property if it costs £250,000 or below. Anything between £250,000 and £925,000, you pay 5% on the property sale price. So for example, if you buy a house costing £600,000, you pay 0% on the first £250,000 and then 5% on the remaining £350,000. So £17,500 in total. Now, if you already own a property and are going to buy another one as an investment property or a second home, you're gonna pay an additional 3% on all those thresholds that I mentioned. So any example that I just gave, you'll pay 3% on the first £250,000 and then 8% on the remaining £350,000. So that's £35,000 altogether compared to 70,500. So clearly a bigger cost, guys. The government really are out here taking their slice of the pie when it comes to property. The more expensive the property, the bigger the tax bill. And with that being said, guys, my second tip is target cheaper properties in growing areas such as up north. Especially if you're looking at investment buy-to-let properties, I do a property market update every month and you will see a common theme in all of those guys that houses in the north are absolutely exploding like that in terms of growth and yield, whilst properties in the south less so. 
Coupled with that is that those houses in the north that are exploding right now are a lot cheaper than down south, guys. And that's why I invest up there. I'm getting capital appreciation. I'm getting yield. I'm getting less stamp duty and I'm buying them for cheaper. It's a no brainer, guys. Message. Now the next cost of buying a house is the legal fees. So what are you paying for when you're paying for legal fees? You're paying for the legal registration of the property from the seller's name into your name. That needs to be done at the land registry so that from a legal perspective, you fully own the property. You're also paying for searches to be done to check the ownership status of the property, i.e. Does a property being sold actually belong to the person who's trying to sell it? You'll be surprised, guys. Are there any existing charges on the property, i.e. from banks or creditors, that would stop the property being sold to you? You're really making sure that from a legal perspective, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed because that's essential. Now, the cost, legal costs depend on a few factors. Choosing a solicitor, guys, is a lot like choosing, say, an electrician or, or a plumber. Some are good, some are average, some are bad. Some are expensive, some are value for money. And a lot like choosing an electrician or a plumber, the best way to get a good one is to get recommendations from other people that have worked with ones that they say, yeah, I had a good experience, they did their job, they were very responsive, use them. And that's my next tip for you guys. Use recommended solicitors, guys. I have bought four times now and I have had bad experiences on two of those occasions. I won't air them out by name, guys, but let me tell you this. It makes the whole buying process so much more stressful, so much more stressful if you have a bad solicitor who's not doing their job, who's not responsive, who's not doing the checks that they're supposed to do. I now know who my go-to solicitor is and I use them every single time because they can be trusted, guys. And I'll use them for all of my future purchases as well. And then lastly, guys, are valuation fees. Sometimes the lender, the mortgage lender, will pay these for you. Sometimes they'll make you pay. It really depends on the mortgage product and the terms. But this basically covers the cost of valuing the property that you've agreed to buy. Why is this important? Because it ensures that you're paying the right price, yeah, for what the property is worth. And it also protects the bank so that they're only lending what the property is worth. So for example, I've had experiences. Um, there was an experience in Doncaster where I put in a bid on a property at the asking price. The lender did a valuation and they valued it at, I think it was 10K less, or maybe even more. I can't quite remember, it was a while ago than what the asking price was that I'd agreed. So the mortgage lender basically said, we're not gonna lend you more than this. You're gonna have to find that money yourself if you wanna buy this property. I came back to the seller, tried to negotiate, they dug their heels in, walked away. But you know that's a real life example of what can happen when a bank says, hey, this property isn't worth what we think it's worth according to the valuation. You can go buy it, but you're gonna have to find the extra money elsewhere. So those are the costs of buying a property, guys. Are there any others that you've encountered let me know in the comment section below. If you found this property, this property, if you found this video useful, drop a like guys, it really helps with the algorithm, recommend it to a friend, and I'll see you guys soon.